Hey y'all, I'm out here at the uh, National Automotive and Truck Museum in Auburn, Indiana, and they've got what's called a, a Paul Stud Hemi. I know all you Mopar fans are going to look at this motor and say, that's not a Hemi, that's not a Hemi. There's only two, I think there's only two that were, were known to exist. This is the only one that anybody knows the location of. So if you have a motor that looks like this sitting in your garage, you got something that's of real value. So anyways, Don's going to tell me a little bit about the car. Let me run him down and uh, we'll get the full story. Don, how are you, brother? Hey, good, Scotty. How are we doing today? Not too bad. Tell me, this is one rare hot rod you got here. Yeah, this is a nice one. This is a very nice ride we have here on display. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it's a 69 Barracuda Coupe. Uh, it was owned and run by the Sox and Martin drag cutters. It has the last known ball stud Hemi. And it is uh, It's totally restored. It's a beautiful ride. As you can see on the fender wells, uh, Dick Landis, Tom Hoover, and a bunch of the drivers have signed the car. It's a very interesting car, and it's uh, now the proud possession of the Natmus Museum. Is it here on loan, or is it actually somebody donated it to the museum? This was donated to the museum uh, last year by a gentleman out of Houston, Texas, Bob Solberg. Cool. Now the first, the first thing any of us motorheads are going to say is, Don, you're lying to me. There is no plug wires going through those valve yep. covers. It can't be a Hemi. That's right. That's what they think at first. But being the ball stud, the plug wires come in from the bottom side a little more, and they're just you almost can't see them under there. It definitely doesn't look like your traditional Hemi. No, it doesn't. But man, that is a pretty motor. Beautiful car. Beautiful, Beautiful car. car. Beautifully done. Who redid it? Uh, Solberg had it redone. Yeah. I can't tell you the names of all the people who worked on it, but this was the Sox and Martin, Tom Hoover's drag cars. All the documentation uh, has pictures of Tom Hoover and his car and uh, Dick Landis and Hemi that never was. And it's got 8,100 original miles on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a drag Close car. A quarter mile at a time. Say, yeah, it's a drag car. And then this is some documentation you found in the trunk or something? That, yes, the whole trunk and everything was loaded with documentation and specs and how it's bored and the whole nine yards on it. Told you every nut size and, and everything, but they didn't tell you how much horsepower. That's correct. And they would have lied back in 69 anyhow. Oh, that's right. They you wouldn't have told you the truth. It's torque what you're after, not horsepower right. anyway. That's right. Man, that is cool. Beautiful ride. And it's set up just like it would have been when they were drag racing it. You're exactly right, yep. Got dragway 42 on it. Can and you open the door for me? Sure. Hey, there's a Sox and Martin sticker on it still. Just like it would have been. Just like it was when she's going down the track. Man, that is pretty With cool. With an automatic transmission. Yep. You can't shift faster than a machine. No matter what you think. I know there's a bunch of people out there that think, oh, yes, I can. Oh, no, you can't. Yeah. Nope. And even though back in the day, in this era, the automatic transmissions weren't as advanced as they are now. No, but still, right. an automatic transmission does not miss a shift. Right. Never. Right. Every time, it's a it's a machine. It does yeah, the same thing every time. B and M shifter, B and M slap shifter. You know what kind of times or anything it ran when it was running? Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head. No. I got There's, you. That's cool. We got the docks, but well, I can't tell you. Now, is it running a fuel cell and all that, or back then they just took them and put some by slicks on them, and there you go. By the tank. Like a fuel pump by the tank. And it'll run on pump gas, leaded pump gas, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, pump gas. What octane does it recommend, do you know? I think it's a high octane, yeah. 293. I would figure. I didn't know what they had back then and what octane fuel they even ran back then. Man, I like that fuel cap, too. That's reminiscent of the old Cudas and stuff. There's some pictures of the Sox and Original guys of it, Tom Hoover and some of the engineers and the guys cool. who built it. Is that taken here? No, that was not taken here. 8,571 miles. That is a rare car. I bet you're all proud to have this. Yeah. One thing better. What? You want to hear it run? Yeah, let's go. Let me shut the camera off, though, and we'll, we'll reset it. Let me get it finished. Do me one favor and shut every... Can we shut everything up on it so I can get a total walk around of it? I it did... You guys got to know, this is history right here. I don't want to screw this up because 20 years from now, who knows where this car will be, and at least we got it one time. I like the fish on the uh, on the front fender, too. That's cool. Boy, that's a pretty car. Are those actually working intakes? Yes. Yeah. Probably cooling intakes, though. 
All right, folks, let me shut this thing down and uh, let's hear this, let's hear this rare hemi. You know, we've all heard a regular hemi, now we're gonna hear a ball stud hemi. So, anyways, let me get this thing set up. I'll be right back. Sounds good, right? Even a Ford fan, John? Does that sound all right to you? Yeah, that, you know what they say, Ford to Ford, Chevy to Chevy, get me in anything. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Folks, there you go. There's just a little piece of history out here at uh, National Automotive and Truck Museum in Auburn, Indiana. Man, what a cool place. Like I said, y'all get in the area, come check some of this historical stuff out, man. It's well worth the price of admission. So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed it. Have a good day. See ya.